2015 Nobel Laureate, uh, which investigations and research are devoted to such things uh, that. Okay, uh, about the future discoveries. Well, I cannot say in general, but let me focus on big discoveries, big potential discoveries in neutrino experiments. Um, I would say, unfortunately, uh, experiments are getting bigger and bigger, getting more and more complex. And okay, well, again, I, I think I cannot tell the uh, scientific activity in general. But let me mention about the uh, neutrino experiments or related fields. Well, as I said, Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, it's not much of a duration to say that we all live in a world that materially and intellectually has been created by science, and that science has given us all the representations of the world which human being lives with today. And now we're going to talk with a highly outstanding person from Japan, Professor Takaki Kajita, a 2015 Nobel laureate. Uh, which investigations and research are devoted to such things uh, that lots of people couldn't even grasp the meaning uh, of things that you are doing, actually. So it's so <laughs> interesting um, to study the neutrino and all the concepts of the universe and how. Well, um, 60 billion of them can pass through the whole our body, and not only our body, but also elsewhere, anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, if this is about neutrino, it's very interesting. And uh, initially, I wanted to ask you that uh, uh, the collaboration matters and uh, about the partners from different mm -hmm. countries, because uh, from the evidence that we have in big time, uh, we understand that lots of authors do not actually realize the potential of the collaborative researches from various countries. Uh, I mean that um, they do not even think that uh, somebody can uh, try to reach someone else who can uh, make some kind of research and that can be some uh, kind of a great symbiosis. But, um, and I thought that uh, there was a, some kind of uh, collaborative research with uh, Arthur McDonald from Canada, but uh, as far as I understood, uh, it was uh, separate researches, but uh, right. the discovery is uh, like the same. But can you tell this in details how it actually was and how um, did it reach to come to a inauguration in 2015 for uh, novel. Yeah, okay. yeah, thank you. <clears throat> well, certainly, um, uh, our group and Art McNerner's group had, a, had different experiments. Um, however, of course, we worked, in a sense, we worked together to understand the property of neutrinos. And our team, um, worked in Japan. Well, um, in fact, um, this is an international collaboration. Uh, our experiment is in Japan, but we have many collaborators from many other countries. And we have always more than 100 people working together in our experiment. And in fact, um, this is a very good uh, experience for us. Um, we are able to always able to work together with many other people from many other countries. That is great. And we, we can learn a lot from people from other countries. So uh, that, that is a very good part. And well, on the other hand, of course, um, our team and Art McDonald's team are independent, but our team discovered one channel of the neutrino oscillations, and Art McDonald's team discovered the other channel of the neutrino oscillation. 
And well, with these two discoveries, we kind of understood the basic structure of the neutrino oscillations. And in that sense, well, we are collaborating. That's really amazing. That's great, thank you. Uh, in regard to the discovery that neutrino has a mass, because standard model of physics uh, didn't imply that it should have a mass actually. So uh, for the future, the, for some kind of upcoming discoveries uh, as a consequence of your personal discovery, uh, probably what could be the potential use for future discoveries and uh, probably for more deeper investigation of the universe, yes. Oh, yes, I think you had a very right point. <laughs> In fact, um, the, in fact, the uh, discovery of the small neutrino mass could be related to our understanding of the matter in the universe. Well, of course, it's obvious that there are matter in the universe, but well, according to our knowledge, we do not, we cannot explain why matter or matter particles exist in the present day universe. And in fact, the neutrinos with very small mass could be the key to understand this big question in the universe. In that sense, um, the discovery of neutrino mass or neutrino oscillation give us a, I would say, hint to understand even bigger question in the universe. So I think we have to continue working on neutrinos. That's for sure. And um, besides, is it uh, correct to say about the hypothesis that um, in the primary plasma, which is called like uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, in primary plasma, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it, it, there is a hypothesis that uh, it was a billion of degrees temperature. And uh, due to the neutrino, we can just establish that it was correct. So is it correct actually to say like this? Well, oh, yes, yes, okay. In the Big Bang universe, the, well, the temperature of the universe was very high. And there are many, say, matter particles and antimatter particles. But naively, we expect there should be equal number of matter particles and antimatter particles. And then with the universe cooling down, we naively expect these matter particles and antimatter particles meet and annihilate, disappearing. Therefore, we naively expect there should be no matter particle, no antimatter particle existing in the present day universe. But there was a, I think, we think that there was a trick. And because of the, uh, neutrinos with very small mass, there could have been a trick uh, to, to, to make the, say, excess of so small amount of matter particles compared with the antimatter, antimatter particle. And this way, at the present day universe, small amount of matter particles remain. Yeah. That's amazing. It's really great to just to understand that it's really in our world. So um, the timeline of the process of the research and the discovery. So how do you think what would be the future timelines for any kind of uh, future discoveries included in physics and maybe probably in some other uh, sphere of knowledge? Uh, because uh, the neutrino investigation, uh, as far as understood in Japan, it started from 1918, maybe earlier. So it took uh, almost 40 years uh, to come from point to point for the, for the discovery and there should be other new discoveries. So this time scale, is it be, could it be shorter or longer in the future? Just your opinion in this regard. Okay, uh, about the future discoveries, 
Well, I cannot say in general, but let me focus on big discovery, big potential discoveries in neutrino experiments. Um, I would say, unfortunately, uh, experiments are getting bigger and bigger, getting more and more complex, and therefore it takes more time to construct the new experiments. Typically, from now on, it may take of the order of 10 years just to construct a new detector. And therefore, the discovery could take, of course, could take more than 10 years. So, even if we are lucky, the new discoveries in neutrino physics may come more than 10 years from now. So mm -hmm. this is the timeline. I understand. Um, you have lots of scientific publications, which is a part of the process of the research and the discovery, actually. Um, lots of authors which we are facing and trying to help them to consult, uh, they are lacking lots of knowledge about the successful scientific publication. So they do not know how to do it properly and uh, lots of nuances and subtleties that uh, just they think they should know, but they do not, do not know it. So have you ever faced some kind of challenges in the course of your personal scientific publications? But to be honest, no. Well, uh, I, I, I would say I, I was quite happy with the present system of publication. I didn't encounter any serious problem. That's great. So to be lucky, actually. Uh, also, I would like to raise the question about scientific retractions and mm -hmm. also about your opinion, because the author may conduct the research and uh, there is a proverb like uh, to earth human to forgive is divine and uh, uh, the researcher may make some mistakes and uh, he also can correct the mistakes but uh, it could be before the publication or whether it could be after the publication so there are two types of retractions actually the first one uh, just uh, we have recently evidenced uh, in 2016, there was a publication of uh, Jack Shostak. This is also a Nobel laureate in 2009 in physiology and medicine. Uh, his publication it was in a very venerable journal, like uh, it was Nature Chemistry, about the origins of the appearance of life on the Earth. And um, their research uh, just showed some uh, hints on the origin of the life on the earth. But uh, ultimately, uh, Sir Shostak, personally by the cell, uh, claimed for the retraction of his research because he couldn't reproduce it after all. Uh, so this is the first uh, direction where retractions are claimed by the authors by themselves. But uh, the another direction is like, uh, somebody else, if somebody from the other um, country just uh, noticed that the research which they uh, analyze from another authors, it's not correct, it's not re reproducible or just some, they have some inaccuracies. So uh, how do you think the fact of the unique publication of a, in a venerable journal, is it just like a sweet piece of cake uh, to in, in order to promote in the career of the scientist, or it's better to have a qualitative and most importantly reproducible research initially. How do you think? Okay, well, again, I, I think I cannot tell the uh, scientific activity in general, but let me mention about the uh, neutrino experiments or related fields. Well, as I said, experiments are getting bigger and bigger. That means number of collaborators are more and more. And as a result, uh, also uh, 
we have been learning from the past experience, sad experiences, and therefore uh, people are in general getting more and more careful about the publication. And at the same time, we have more and more people in the collaboration. And therefore, typically uh, in neutrino experiments, um, we have, say, multiple groups of people who do the analysis on the same topic. And that way, um, each analysis group can check each other their result. And this way, the probability of making any serious mistake is nowadays very low. Um, so in this sense, um, we, we have been improving not to make any serious mistake. I and, and I hope, uh, well, of course, big experiment may not be sometimes so great, great, but uh, this is certainly uh, one of the good points for the big collaboration. And this could be, a, say, used in, in other scientific fields. Yeah. And, and so in this regard, what would be your advice for younger scientists who are just uh, starting their uh, way for the science and uh, in this direction? Well, okay. Um, for young scientists, uh, typically people may not have much experience uh, in research. And therefore, sometimes uh, young people may forget some important check or something like that. But well, with this kind of big collaboration, if one person, young person work in a big collaboration, you can learn how to check their results. And I think this way, um, young people, I think this is a very good uh, experience for these young people. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you are now working on a huge project. Uh, can you tell it in detail, please? It is called oh, yeah. Agra. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm, uh, my main work is moving from neutrino experiment to gravitational wave experiment. And this project is called Kagra. Uh, this is a um, new uh, gravitational wave detector project. We have just finished the uh, construction. And in fact, we carried out um, an observation run for a short time in, uh, in the spring. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. our sensitivity is not good enough to really observe gravitational wave events. But we are really excited to observe gravitational waves in our detector in the near future. Now, okay. by the way, this is a collaboration of about 400 people, wow. mainly from the Asian countries. Yeah. I think you should be so much excited, the same as uh, working with Neutrino, actually. Yes. Uh, the Kagura, it's a construction. It's also like Super Kamehameha underground. 200 oh. meters in the ground? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, Kagura is, in fact, constructed in underground. Uh, it is a um, laser interferometer with one um, length is about three kilometers. So three kilometer by three kilometer laser interferometer in underground. That's great. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, you know, there is a, a movie like uh, Star Trek. Have you ever mm -hmm. in this? Um, if you, if you, yes. So, have you ever been inspired by the universe of Star, Star Trek? Just uh, no. <laughs> okay. And also, uh, there is one also hy hypothesis. That's one that I would like to tell you about the universe as a computer simulation. And uh, in 2016, there was a memorial debate dedicated to Isaac Asimov 
in USA, and they they have been debated. Some scientists uh, it was Neil deGrasse Tyson as well, uh, there, uh -huh. and they debated about the probabilities of that hypothesis of the that we are living in the computer simulation, and uh, they described some uh, arguments about the neutrons, quarks, uh, I don't remember actually, maybe about neutrinos as well. So like elementary particles, which are like bytes uh, from the computer game or something like that. Just, it's very interesting about your opinion, uh, whether such hypothesis could be, could exist in our world, actually. Oh, oh. <laughs> I see. I don't know. <laughs> it's just I'm a, a, just an experimental physicist, so I'm, my work oh, is to do experiment. That's great that we have that we are having the arguments in contrary of that fiction like this, actually. So probably. The real world is not like a simulation. <laughs> All right, uh, Professor Kajita, thank you so much for this talk. It was really great. Uh, it is a great honor for all of us, and we really appreciate this. Thank you very much. And I would like to express uh, to have a great luck and great success in your new upcoming uh, discoveries. I do thank believe you. that you will have them. It's definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. All the best to you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.